Phenomenology is an architectural philosophy that explores people's feelings, experience, perception, and connection with the built environment. The intellectual and phenomenal particularity in Stephen Hall's architecture derives from the philosophical depth that he interprets in his thinking on and making of architecture. Hall puts forward an interpretation of phenomenology ph philosophy of Mar Marus. Merleau, Putney, and its translation into the realm of architecture. In his major book, Phenomenology of Perception, Merleau, Putney explores the essence of being as it resides in the perceptual situatedness of the body, subject into the world. Perception is considered as the fundamental act that enables human beings to inhabit space and time. When the body subject gains access into the world through the perception, the world becomes what we perceive. For Potney, idea is caught the invisible of this world which inhabits this world, sustains it, and renders it visible. Unquote. Similarly, Holes is interested in the phenomenal nature of this idea. In his search for connecting the phenomenal properties with conceptual strategy, the architect responds to every project by reevaluating the physical, cultural, historical references of the site, time, or program through which he achieves a limited concept that establishes an order, a field of inquiry, a limited principle of which architectural design process. This brings us to the Bollock Attic through assessment analysis of the Bollock Attic. We can see the connection to scholarly writing and phenomenology. Theorists and architects such as Martin Hedke, Joanne Alasama, and Stephen Hall. Phenomenological concepts in architecture try to develop an unforgettable scenery experience through the phenomena of light, space, and form. We will focus on the influence of the materiality and design of the Bollock Attic in creating an intangible scenery experience. Stephen clearly designed a building which embodies the theme and encourages an architect to concentrate on the importance of material context and appearance as it stimulates the human consciousness and explores the deeper programmatic issues in architecture. In the Nelson Atkins Museum of Kansas City, which was a building that we won in another international competition in 1999 against Tarawando, a lot of people we broke the rules. You're, there's a neoclassical building, uh, 1937, 250,000, a very large building, and uh, you were supposed to add on to the north. And so Ando added on a glass box, Potsdam Park added on some pieces. Each architect followed the rules, and I said, this, this is not the right thing to do because you should keep that original building intact and make a new building that would integrate into the landscape and I remember that the jury was a very key jury because Jay Carter Brown, the head of the National Gallery, was on the jury. Ada Louise Huxtable, the greatest architecture writer from the New York Times, was on the jury. But it was a very, you know, it was a large jury, including the director. And I said, I apologize. I, I really feel that I had to break the rules. And I really think now we have an exceptional scheme, an exceptional way to add 140,000 square feet onto your neoclassical uh, stone building. And it was the idea of the stone and the feather. But I said, the way I got the nerve to do this, I, I read in your facade, in the limestone facade, you know how they have these sayings all around the building. And one of them was, the soul has more need for the ideal than of the real. And I said, so this is an ideal scheme. And you know maybe we're going to be eliminated because I know that we're outside the boundary of the site. Actually, one of them said, but it's so long. And I said, have you ever been to the Louisiana Museum? That's the, one of the greatest museums of art because of the experience, because of the variety of the experience coming in and coming out and the landscape coming into the sequence. You never get museum fatigue at the Louisiana Museum. And if you look at what we're doing here, it's shorter than the Louisiana Museum. And actually, all the head people on the jury had been to the Louisiana, so I actually used that building to win this competition in Kansas City. Time Magazine named it the best museum of, of the year and all that kind of things. And it still stands, anybody who goes and sees it realizes it's, it's all about the interior spaces and the light and the sequence of movement. Because there's nothing on the outside and it's buried in the ground, it comes up in five lenses in the landscape. So. But it works as a public space too. At night, it's open. It's a sculpture garden. People, you know, walk their dogs. They jog through. It's a very 
porous and open kind of place.